Let's build the handyman up here in Northern California. Today we we're looking at a old school Kenmore heavy duty 80. And these were built like tanks according to my view. And so what had happened with this one is there was a couple things that happened. A lot of people like to grab these by the top and then these are only plastic mounts and the plastic mounts will break. So be careful by grabbing with these with the top. It's not recommended you grab any machine by the top console. And so this one here basically if you stick your hand in here and pull forward, you'll be able to pull the top off normally. But there are two tangs here in the front to hold this on. You have to push into the screwdriver if you can't pull it out with your hand. So what had happened is on this one, you can see there's a filter on the side of this barrel. It's kind of a lengthy process to fix it, but I fixed it anyway just to uh, keep this tanker uh, floating around in the uh, economy. And so basically what happened is if you move the machine, if you cart the machine on this side, then what happens is that filter will bump up against the side and cause the filter to crack. And that's what happened. It started to leak. And so. Basically, in order to fix that, the way I fix it, you can try and uh, no, well, you can try and take it apart from here, but it's kind of difficult. So what I did is I pulled everything out. There's a 716 bolt that holds the agitator, and then there's a large bolt that holds the basket in place. You have to pull everything off. The top has to come off. This has to come off. When you, when you, uh, when I take the basket out or pull, push this to the side, take this out, take the plastic off, and then push the barrel and then sort of fold that around. And then pull it all out. And then what happens is You'll see inside here, there's a nut inside the tub that holds that plastic filter in. You need to take that out and you need to remove that whole plastic filter. And then you use like some goop or E6000 cement to, to fix it. And there's two, there's two hoses you need to disconnect from here, from the water pump in the drain, uh, to pull it out. Pull that filter out. Once you've pulled it out, you can take it apart and then sand the crack and then put your E6000 or goop over it. I put uh, both sides, I gooped both sides and it should be good for quite a while. So this is your drain. You can see there's a little kink here. If you ever have a machine that's not spinning out correctly, you want to make sure and see that there's no kinks that are pinching the drain hose. And this one is a belt driven. And this belt is pretty good tension. It's a little bit tighter than I normally would uh, have them, but it's not too tight and it's fine. If you have them too tight, you'll put tension on the water pump. And the water pump is right back, straight back there in the middle of the picture. I would take a couple of drops of oil and lube that water pump from the top shaft. And these are your agitator dogs, excuse me, your root wag shifters. These are two electromagnetic coils that if you take these wires off um, and isolate the coils, you should have continuity in the coils. If your machine is not spinning or not agitating, 
it's possible one of these two coils could be bad and or the wires that go to it, because these wires are constantly moving um, when the machine is on. Uh, and so basically what happens is eventually these wires sometimes will get a break inside underneath the insulation. So you need to check that. You want to check if you get, you have to go too far on this. You have to check the voltage at these two terminals. Uh, one is for the uh, spin and one is for the agitation. In the spin cycle you need to get 110 volts coming out of these two wires. And then um, on the other cycle you need to get 110 volts coming out of the other cycles. Now these motors, I've never really had any problem with these motors, although these capacitors occasionally go bad. If you hear a hum in the motor, and this is, applies to most machines, if you hear a hum in the motor, and the motor is not coming on, but you hear a hum coming from the motor, then it's very possible that agitator could be bad. I mean, excuse me, that capacitor, this capacitor could be bad. And I would save these capacitors for, from washing machines because they're somewhat universal. Um, as long as they're not a solid state electronic computer run machines, uh, these capacitors pretty much are universal. Now this is the bulb for the belt tensioner. So basically what I do is, in order to put tension on a belt, you need to loosen that. It's regular right-handed thread. And then loosen it slightly. And then put your wrench back on it. And then tap on this as you tighten that. Because what happens is as you tighten it, it tends to loosen up. So you don't want that to happen. So basically loosen it and tap on this as you're tightening this bolt and that will hold the tension. And then also on your water feeds, basically normally they're marked somewhere on the machine. They mark, may not be marked as clearly as these, but normally they are marked on the machine. And basically you want to make sure that there's no debris clogged up in your screens and you need to leave the screens in place. You can take them out to clean them but make sure they go back in correctly because if there's a bit of debris that goes inside the valve it can make the valve stick open. So thanks for watching and if you need any help you can contact me at applianceworks.yahoo.com 707-445-159